I know that your sisters and brothers, your siblings here at St. Andrew are very excited, as is the whole church, uh, gathered here from all different kinds of places, uh, because you are a sign of hope for us, uh, a mantle that you now will wear uh, in a rather public way. You know that kind of mantle because of your earlier life experience, but now you'll be sharing that ministry of service with your colleagues in ordained ministry in this diocese and throughout the church. Jesus, our teacher and our Lord, stoop to wash the feet of his disciples. And he told them, this is an example just as I have done, so you must do. I love being a deacon. It was partially because it, it was a different kind of way of being in relationship with people. Partially it was because I had a privilege uh, to serve in the inner city of St. Louis for a period of time in the mid 80s, early 80s, uh, in the midst of just some very difficult times in our nation's history. Poverty, homelessness, uh, all over the place. The AIDS crisis was beginning. And to have the privilege to serve as a minister of word and service was a unique opportunity. The ministry of a deacon, we're told, is patterned on the choice of the seven to assist in the care of widows and orphans so that the apostles could be about the work of the proclamation of the gospel. And for a few months now, you'll have the opportunity to be a deacon. Now, in our tradition, as you know, uh, if you've been discerned for or, or ordained ministry as a presbyter, uh, you're ordained a deacon and then spend a particular period of time and then you move on. But this time in your life is a unique opportunity for you both to serve and to learn from others who serve. It was, I think, the 21st or 22nd of December, 1993, of we were living in Whitewater, Wisconsin, serving at St. Luke's, and I was identified as the, the Jubilee Ministry Officer for the diocese. Uh, Jubilee Ministry, for those of you uh, who are un unaware, is uh, the Episcopal Church, uh, during the presiding bishop, uh, the term of uh, presiding bishop um, uh, Browning, uh, identified particular initiatives uh, that are, are focused as a jubilee ministry, whether it be service to the poor, service to the homeless, a variety of experiences. And each diocese was asked to set aside a person or two to help coordinate that ministry, and I was chosen to do that. And I was invited to the Episcopal Church Center in New York uh, the 20th or 21st of December, 1993. I, I'd been to New York once in my entire life, and so we all flew in, those of us who were new officers, and they housed us up, got there late in the evening, and I got up early to go for a run, and, and it was bitter cold. And as I, as I ran down the street, uh, there were women with their children in bags sitting on heat or, or, uh, vents that were coming out of the ground so they could stay warm. Uh, place after place after place was like that. And you know, Whitewater, Wisconsin is a wonderful place, but we didn't have that kind of poverty. But it was enormously impressive for me to say, gosh, this is the world we live in. This is the world we live in. And we're called, as ministers of word and service, to respond to that kind of need and to invite others into that kind of intentional ministry. So, so I came home and I thought to myself, what do I know about that kind of service 
I need to call people who really have gifts for this kind of service together. And so I spoke to my bishop and he said, well, why don't you call the deacons together in our diocese to see how they might respond? Which was a wonderful opportunity to listen to their stories coming from a variety of experiences and expressions to look for the needs and how best we might invite others, not just the ordained persons, but others into that kind of responsive and uh, proactive kind of ministry. It was an enormous privilege. And I, I felt like I got to connect to my brothers and sisters who were deacons in a way that I just don't on a, on a regular basis. So as a ministry of Jubilee in your own life, spend these next months learning from those who serve. Then you find, find a particular place in this community, you may already know one, where you can, you can partner with someone or some others who can help you learn more and more about what it means to be a servant. And uh, you'll have the privilege of being able to then join them in that ministry. We, we gather today on the Feast of St. Thomas the Apostle transferred from yesterday. And uh, this particular gospel text uh, is, is an important text for Dana and me. We had this text at our wedding, believe it or not. Uh, and, and some people were at the wedding saying, why did you choose that text? <laughs> well, we hear in the letter to the Hebrews that faith is not in something present, but always in something that is hoped for. And Thomas the Apostle was at the table and his feet were washed by Jesus. And that indicates the kind of relationship that faith is. Faith is really about a relationship, isn't it? It's not just, it's just, it's not just reading a paragraph. We'll, we'll say the Nicene Creed in a few moments. It's not just attesting to something. We see in Thomas's response when the disciples say, we, we've seen the Lord, he's risen. And he says, I, I won't believe it until I see it. And then Jesus, the risen Christ, appears, and Thomas's response is, my Lord and my God. It affirms the relationship that Thomas has with Jesus. Not just an affirmation of, Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. It's about relationship. And you have the privilege now of, in a public way, engaging in the name of the church in particular kinds of relationships that you'll have as an ordained person with those you're called to serve and those who serve with you. As some of you know, I uh, spent a, a few years in another province in the Anglican Communion, the Anglican Church in Aotearoa, New Zealand, and Polynesia, and uh, I know their book well, and I'm inspired by the instruction uh, to, to deacons uh, in that prayer book. You'll hear the instruction and question from our prayer book in just a few moments, but I'd like to conclude by reading this to you as a, an offering from another part of the communion. Deacons in the Church of God serve in the name of Christ, and so remind the whole church that serving others is essential to all ministry. They have a special responsibility to ensure that those in need are cared for with Christ-like compassion and humility. When called upon to do so, they may baptize, preach, and give instruction in the faith. When the people are gathered for worship, deacons are authorized to read the Holy Scriptures, lead the prayers, distribute the bread and the wine of Holy Communion. Mindy Bone Hancock, we praise God for your commitment to serve Christ in the order of deacon. To search and to serve is the priceless contribution God calls all of us to make. By this, you will bring enthusiasm and encouragement to others. Work with all who labor for the kingdom. 
as your hands care for the needy, may they witness to Christ your master, who took a towel and basin. He came among us as one who serves.